I recently came across a project called 8086 Tiny. It's a fully functional 8086 emulator written in 800 lines of pure C, and it also comes with a precompiled FreeDOS image for convenience. It runs out of the box on most modern systems, so I eventually started having intrusive thoughts. Is it possible to run this on a Pokemon Emerald save file? Pokemon games have exploits which allow you to run your own custom code, and I thought it would be fun to run an actual operating system from a Pokemon save. The plan is to get the code and change it into something that could run on the Game Boy Advance. C code can be compiled with the Game Boy Advance CPU as the target, so it shouldn't be too hard. Then we can write an interface around it and create a usable ROM version. Once we have that, we can put the same code inside a Pokemon Emerald save file, which definitely won't cause any issues. I guess we'll figure out everything along the way. I checked out the code and immediately removed everything related to graphics, which gave me a solid base to start with. I also decided to give up things like real-time clock and writing to disk. This is also when I realized that this project was originally meant for the obfuscated C contest, so it wasn't exactly easy to read. The first issue I noticed was memory. Our target hardware has about 400 kilobytes of RAM available and only 256 kilobytes are contiguous. In other words, there is no way in hell we can allocate that array. Instead, I ran some tests and discovered booting the system only touched 185 kilobytes of memory, so there was a chance. I abstracted away all the memory accesses in the emulator and forwarded them to a separate function and then wrote a simple translation layer which allocates memory only when needed. This took me a while since most of the emulator code assumed memory is contiguous, which required lots of hacky and inefficient code just to satisfy that condition. I also abstracted away all code related to handling keyboard input and text output, which left me with something that could potentially compile on a Game Boy. It's time to move the Game Boy code then. Several years ago I already wrote a text display driver since I needed that for my VBA elf loader exploit, so I used that code and I started writing a terminal emulator. With no file system access I had to figure out where to put the BIOS and floppy disk image, so I just encoded them as constant static arrays for now. Finally it compiled. And I got nothing. Turns out this emulator does lots of misaligned memory accesses. This is completely fine on x86, but ARM architectures are very picky about alignment. The Game Boy Advance CPU does not support misaligned memory accesses. Therefore I needed a way to convince the compiler to generate chains of 8-bit memory accesses instead of 16-bit instructions. I experimented a bit and I eventually arrived at this masterpiece which did exactly what I needed, so I carefully applied it to my code. Yeah, it's still not working. I did a lot of tracing of the emulator state and compared it to my working build, and I discovered this piece of code was failing. Eventually I was able to narrow it down to this conversion, which is apparently implementation defined according to the C standard, so it might behave differently on different platforms. I wrote my own conversion routine which always behaved in a consistent way, then proceeded to replace every cast with my custom function. Finally after doing lots of additional minor changes, the emulator has shown signs of life. This was also the first time I was able to judge the speed of this thing, and it wasn't exactly breaking any records. With emulation out of the way, I proceeded to add all of the remaining functionality like keyboard support, better font, and this cool animated wave. I finally had an emulator working on a Game Boy Advance, but our goal is to actually fit this into a Pokemon save file, so let's see what we can do. Pokemon Emerald actually stores two files in its save data as a form of redundancy, and if one of them is corrupted, the game will load the other one. So putting our code inside a save file is as easy as overwriting one of the saves and letting the game load the data from the other save. The amount of code space we can get in a Pokemon Emerald save file without any extra trickery is about 56 kilobytes, and we're way over that. Most of our code space is consumed by BIOS and floppy disk images, so we have to find a better storage solution. This is where the link cable comes in. We can make a hypothetical disk drive which we can connect to our console. This got my code to reasonable size, but then I realized I'm gonna be facing another major issue. Game Boy ROM code is loaded at a very specific base address, but if we want to run it from a save file, we'll need to change it. 
First, I thought about forcing GCC to create position-independent code to solve that problem, but it really didn't want to work. Eventually, I created a copy of the devkit arm linker script and changed the base address of the ROM section to cartridge RAM. Then, I can use that modified script to compile my code at the correct address. Of course, I have no hopes of telling the linker how to create a Pokemon save file, so I wrote a script which dumped all sections of the ill file and manually arranged them. I already had a base save file I made a while back which could run custom code, so I just used that as a base. And with that, we finally have our code running. Turns out we can't have our code run from cartridge RAM, since it's locked to 8-bit accesses only. This means we need to copy our code to work RAM first, except we don't really have that much free space there. My testing has shown 232 kilobytes of work RAM is required to get the system booted, which means we have 24 kilobytes left, and our code is exceeding that. I thought I would have to start optimizing things for size, but then I realized I can just bully the compiler to try doing it for me instead, and it worked. If I wanted to do things properly I should recompile my image to use less memory, or even replace it with something like ELKS. ELKS is a Linux kernel fork which runs on 8086 systems and can work with as little as 128 kilobytes of memory, if configured properly. I also felt like I should try this on real hardware. Here's the Chinese bootleg emerald cartridge I showed in one of my other videos. I opened it very carefully, and confirmed that it has a common 16 megabyte flash chip inside. So I had to try to reflash it, just so I could have an authentic experience. Here's how much time it took to get past various boot stages. The system is far from usable, but this is not what I was aiming for. The goal was to be a silly guy, and I think I succeeded. Thank you for watching.